Good morning, you guys. So as Greg is setting up our next install, so excited to show you what we're gonna do. I am gonna make Jerry's breakfast. So Jerry is quite the buddy. Um, he loves fresh fruit in the morning. So usually before I take him out, I just cut up a couple fruits, jalapenos, apples, <laughs> peaches, and a little bit of bread. He knows he's about to eat. There we go. So let's get his food ready and then we'll start the install. He loves his fresh fruit, you guys. Oh, I know that that collar doesn't look pleasing to the eye. He's been plucking himself, thinking he might need a mate. <laughs> um, so we have to leave that on until all of his hair on his belly grows back. Just waiting for Aline. Well, well, well. Good morning. Look who decides to show up to our build. That's rude. That's rude. What's going on, Greg? Morning coffee in your hand. Wow, look at this setup. All right, all right, all right. Would you look at that? Wow. We have some long awaited stuff that we are going to be doing today. Just check that out. I think the brand speaks for itself. The table is all set up. Wow. So all we need is an intro to explain what we're doing and. And then we'll get started. All right, let's set this. Oh, there she is. Greg, you have to start the intro. I gotta go grab my coffee. Yeah? You wanna hand me that squirt gun that you have in your hand? What is going on, guys? On this week's episode, we are Ladies finally... Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the garage couple. Dum -dum. <laughs> Where did that come from? Hello, you guys. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Say, hey, yeah, did you hear me? Where did that come from? I haven't been in the classroom in a while, and I usually use this in the classroom for karaoke and when I feel like spicing it up. So I figured I could use it today. Got to turn the echo on. Today. Want to try? try? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'll put this away. Thanks, guys. Go well, take it take away, Greg. So on this week's episode of Garage Couple, we are finally installing our tire carrier on our Jeep Wrangler TJ to finally put the massive 38 inch Milestar tire on the rear of our TJ. Now we've been running this small tire for way too long and it's time to finally make the upgrade. On top of that, we are also gonna be installing several other things. Now the reason why this is a special install is because we are using the absolute best tire carrier you could buy for your TJ. Now this one's from Highline Off-Road and it installs without a latch. So this is a very special episode because we are installing the very best tire carrier. We will explain details for exactly why that is. Just keep on watching. We're also going to be installing a third brake light wheel behind the wheel as well as announcing who won our hood shock giveaway as well as installing a Rock Tricks flag. And in fact, we have all the hardware here. So we have all our tools, we have all these boxes here, and we have a nice Sunday, Saturday. Saturday, Greg's tired, you guys he had overnight shifts this week. <laughs> and so all of the links to everything are gonna be in the description below in case you were wondering. So why don't we go ahead and get the ball rolling? Let's get started on all these goodies. You guys asked for a cool intro and I gave it to you. You're welcome, enjoy. So we are gonna grab our razor blade. All right. And let's go ahead and dig in. I mean, it's really heavy. Greg, are we digging in like shovel digging? Should we grab a shovel? Digging no. in. So <laughs> really, really quick before we begin, this is a tire carrier with bumper combination where the huge 38 inch tire that we have is gonna be sitting on our bumper, not our tailgate. So unlike Aline's body mount DV8 tire carrier over here, which if you haven't seen our videos about how much we love using our trunk after installing this mod, please feel free to check it out. Link will be right there. But in any case, this bumper is heavy duty. It is made in the United States. And most importantly, there are no finicky or pesky latches that you must succumb to in order to open your trunk. 
So what that means is you use your normal trunk function, your tailgate function, to swing open the tire carrier. Sounds very appealing to me, honestly. So I am literally ecstatic. I will never be able to see out of the rear of my Jeep again, but not a problem, Jeep problems it seems like. Also, if you're wondering, we are gonna be giving away the hood shock sometime randomly throughout this video, so you have to keep watching in order to see if you're the one that won. We're gonna pick a random comment from our prior video at random, random, random. Very random. Random, 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 random. Random. You should grab the mic, Greg. You should go grab my beautiful mic. So let's get started. <laughs> uh, let's start with the bumper. So I'm gonna unbox this bumper now. Look at this packaging. That is some, some cool stuff. This is like what orthopedic surgeons use to cast people. What? Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna, looks like a box of hardware right over here. Let's take this out. And then the bumper. This is gonna be. Do we need some help? A mission here. Oh. <laughs> the side with the swing away receiver part is significantly heavier sounds heavy duty to me and it has a trailer hitch we don't have a trailer hitch currently Holy moly guacamole look at that let's see if oh. I can pick it up now that we have our bumper opened and it's ready to be installed we can go ahead and check out our hardware which we need that uh, you know to dig into it let's just dig into the hardware just digging in it comes with a couple frame tie-in brackets so, hardware installation instructions. Installation. It says it's gonna take about one to two hours to install the bumper and then about one hour to install the tire carrier. But with the garage couple, half. Half of that. <laughs> so, this is really nice. I love these instructions. They're available as PDF. Again, by Highline Off-Road, made in the United States. I am really excited. Let's do this thing. So, the very first thing I wanna do is actually remove the stock bumper. Now, as you can see, we don't have the stock bumper on right now. This is, I believe it's a poison spider bumper. Probably gonna give this away to someone local, so just stay tuned, because we don't really have a use for that. I could sell it for a couple hundred dollars, but I'd rather give it away. So just stay tuned, just maybe, maybe, just maybe. <laughs> maybe there might be a keyword. You're just repeating today, aren't maybe, you? Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you can't blame me, can you? No, I, I can't. I worked 15 hours overnight, I barely slept, and I'm here installing this. I was dreaming about doing this. So. He got home you guys and was like, no sleep, let's get to it. So, applause. So why don't we remove the spare tire? Grab your three fourth inch with your tire. <laughs> <laughs> with your lock. So these are all the tools we will be using to get the job done. Literally a bunch of sockets, a drill. We need a 7 16th drill, some screwdrivers, electrical connections, some Loctite electrical tape, and of course our socket and our parts. We are gonna do this thing. <laughs> do the honors. Can she do it? Wow. I thought that would be lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, look at that difference. Isn't that kind of nuts? Kind of nuts. I think that's like a 30 or something? 31? 32 No, no. Oh, mine oh, are 35. Here's a 35. What does it say on it? Let's see. It looks like this is probably the original tire. It says 245 by 75 by 16. I'm guessing that's like around 30 inches. Maybe someone can drop it below what it is exactly. This is a 38 inch by 13.5. That is a rock trick rim in case you haven't seen our install video. So let's continue removing. Now, according to the instructions, there's two 18 millimeter nuts on both sides. So there's a total of four screws holding the stock bumper in. Now I believe ours already has the aftermarket plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the two screws on each side. Let's show you exactly what it looks like. I have with me here, this is a 9 16th socket head, if you're wondering. Gonna be using a 5/8 on a socket to take out the four other screws, the ones that are in the instructions. So you are gonna want to save these bolts, as you will probably be reusing them in a bit. 
What happened, Craig? <laughs> so perks of perks of buying one with an aftermarket bumper. Looks like we have to, a couple extra bolts down here. Let's take them out. And them shackles out. Shaggy. No, mom. Got them big boys. We have air tools. We choose not to use them. Uh -huh. Next, gonna just slightly loosen some of the bolts holding in the gas tank. Looks like it's holding the bumper into place, so let's do it. Looks like there's a total of four. Egg. Oh. Doesn't want to come off. We're gonna get it off. Take it off. Watch your toes, okay? Oh, use your leverage. Grab this side and pry it off. That's it. Push. Push. Got it. Old bumper is off with a little mallet therapy. Wow. Some good exercise here, you guys. Out with the old, in with the new. Look at that difference. Just based on looking at it, look how much thicker that new bumper is. Extra support. Also that toe hitch is gonna be fantastic. So we're having a bit of a dilemma here and it's not because of the parts at all. Actually the kit is really well made and it comes with all these amazing bolts. Now they recommend using one of these, four of these to secure the new bumper to the frame. However, to do so, you have to drill a 7 16 hole on the inner side of the frame so that you can pass this large bolt through and tighten everything down. Now, that's one option. Another option is to just reuse the bolts that came out of the vehicle, which may or may not be sufficient. Now, one of my, uh, one of my hesitancies and drawbacks to drilling through the inside of the frame is that on the driver's side here, there isn't much room on the back between the fr inner frame and the gas tank. And I really don't want to put a hole in my gas tank today and honestly, I mean, there's gonna be a lot more weight on this bumper and obviously when off-roading, there's gonna be a lot of forces present. So I definitely think it would be beneficial to have these longer bolts that have two anchoring points as opposed to just one. But I think today we're gonna go ahead and just install the bolts that just came out just to expedite the process because we don't wanna, I don't wanna have a bad Saturday. I wanna just pop <laughs> this in and maybe down the line, I'm gonna put these bigger bolts in, but not today. So let's continue with the, and, and honestly, it's your choice. It, it's like, if you're okay with that risk, then you should be able to make that decision for yourself. I'm totally making that decision today. If I notice that it's wobbly or if I notice anything at all, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it immediately. So let's continue with the process. But in case you're not like me and you wanna continue with the longer bolts, these are the two holes they are talking about. You're gonna just go ahead and with a 7 16 drill all the way through this, probably put a piece of wood behind here or something so you don't hit your gas tank. And you can go ahead and then thread the bolts in. Now we are prepared to do so, but you know, I think I'm gonna just reuse the stock bolts here, which, in which are these guys right over here. Let's go grab our handy dandy stool, might be helpful as Greg is sitting. Seems like a lot of my teaching tools from the classroom are coming in handy these days in garage couple land. Catch, aim, fire. This is the bracket that came off. This is the replacement bracket. <laughs> Significant difference in thickness. Gonna be reusing those original screws to screw this thing on. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Just gonna keep these hand tight for now. On to the next. On to the next. Literally Strong. trapped between three tires. It's 
sorry for the background noise. So we have these shims that go between the frame and the frame tie-in bracket, just like so, right over here. See this gap? So you just slip this in, just like so. So we put the shims into place. This is how it looks. That is the shim right there. We just kind of have it laying as is. We're next, we're gonna lift up the bumper, or I'm gonna lift up the bumper, and Aline is gonna attempt to thread it on. Seems like it's gonna be kind of challenging as this is a larger bumper. So if you're planning on doing this install, maybe get a six pack of beer and offer it to another gentleman to help you out, or gentlewoman. That's right, don't forget it. So what we ended up doing is I was on the left side supporting, Greg was on the right, and we aligned them and just hand tightened them so that it was sitting and now Greg is going back to tighten them. This is definitely a two person job you guys. Putting in those final touches, just tightening these two bolts. Looks like the body mount over here is making contact with this bolt. So we're gonna have to tighten this using a hand wrench, which is gonna be kind of tedious, but should be okay. Let's go ahead and tighten these two. Greg is a little stuck between our two tires over here. On to the next. There is one bolt that you can't just tighten um, with that ratchet, so we are attempting to use a 5 8 wrench to tighten in. How's it going, Greg? Is it working? It is going. It is going a little slower than I'd like, but it is going. Okay. Once this is in, you tighten all the nuts, all, all of the nuts that we just put in and bolt. And then that concludes the bumper install. Afterwards, we just have to put in the tire carrier install, which according to the instructions should take half as long as the bumper, which already didn't take a whole lot of time to begin with. Thank you, your highness. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to the next step. This is the beautiful tire carrier. Time to crack it open. Crack, Greg. Ah. More of this awesome vacuum packaging. Look at that. <laughs> Here is the carrier. Wow. Looks amazing already. Let's see the rest of the package. Some hardware. Let's get to it. Looks like a bracket to me. What do you think? Looks like a bracket to me. What do you think? I think it's a bracket. What do you think? Looks like a bracket to me. What do you think? <laughs> Some more lovely hardware. Only the finest. Greg is super excited. We've been waiting quite a while for this. Literally since we got the Jeep. This is the largest tire we are ever going to have mounted on our Wrangler. And we are literally, I cannot wait. I mean, look at that. That thing already looks so nice as is. Wow. It's only going to look better with the tire on it. Moving on to the next step, we are going to be removing the stock tire carrier. This is a 13 millimeter socket right here. One, two, and then three, four, five, six. Wow, sounds like fun. You want to do the honors? Sure thing. Cut, cut the wire. Let's the do third it. Pick, right? All right, I'm gonna I place it right over here. Go ahead. What? It's a boy. Let me hand this to you. This is a T27. Remove those three rubber pieces next. 
This is a T27 that Aline is using, isn't that right, Aline? That's right. By the way, your headlights, they require T what? 15. Good work, Greg. Way to come in there as my second man. Okay. Last one. How do you feel? That's right. Talk to me. Pretty right. good. This is your microphone. Thank you guys, thank you guys. I want to thank everyone out there that supported me the whole way from the first day of starting Garage Couple. Thank you all, thank you. So here's the tire carrier swing out arm. This is a grease fitting. We're just gonna go ahead and screw this grease fitting in just over here using a 7 16 wrench. And if we haven't mentioned this before, these wrenches are the business, right Greg? The business. This is the bracket. I think I'm doing it the right way. If I'm not, I will correct myself. You're gonna basically reuse the bolts that came out and only hand tighten at this point in time. We got a visitor here. This is Mama Garage Couple, one of the two. Hi, this is my mom. <laughs> Behind the scenes of Garage Couple, exclusive. Time to install the swivel joint. You're gonna use a washer. Through the shorter end, drop it down through this hole and screw on this hex nut, just like so. What was this called again? The swivel joint? That's sick. I just made that up, Bob. Way to call me out. Oh. <laughs> Show the swivel, show it off. Swivel, swivel down the middle. Swivel, swivel. Sick. Look at those angles. I believe this piece goes over here. This is my first time doing the install. I'm not gonna thread it in all the way. And it also comes with a second piece that's a little longer. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this as is as we continue the install. Basically, it's gonna have to seat right in there. And so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fully commit to it just yet. The very next step is to drop this key into this hole. You're going to use the part with the keyed end onto the bottom. And also you should apply some grease to this. I actually don't have grease with me, but I will grab some right after this video and fully grease it using that Zerk fitting that comes with it. So you're just going to go ahead and drop this guy in and it should sit into place as it did. And then move on to the next step. So slide one brass washer into place. Oh my goodness, it's time. Let's slide this on. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. Beautiful. Time to put on the second brass fitting. Wonderful. And now it's time to put the cap on it. All right, Greg. All righty. That looks so sleek. The stainless end cap as well as this button. Button. Bolt. Great. Let's put it in. <laughs> This was so easy. Easy. Peasy. Pumpkin. Lemon. Drop. Squeezy. Martini. Martini. All right, now we could also close this and see. Ah, we're not, not too far off. Nice. Using an Allen wrench, you are gonna tighten this little buddy over here. And in the meantime, I adjusted my catcher. Hopefully it is. Who's the boss, Greg? That's right. So we forgot to put the star washer and the flat washer for this button bolt. So we're gonna go ahead and do so now. Using one of these bad boys, we're gonna slip it up from that bad boy into that other bad boy and then tighten it using this bad boy over here. <laughs> Lots of bad boys around here, I guess. We should just number them. Bad boy one, bad boy two, bad boy three. Okay. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? To install the other swivel joint onto the tire carrier, there's two places to mount this. If you have a body lift, you mount it on the top. If you, have, if you don't have a body lift, so we don't have one, you can go ahead and mount it on the bottom. So mount it, mount it to that bad boy right over there with this bad boy and this bad boy. What's up? Wow, okay. okay. All right, I got some competition today, huh? <laughs> so 
So this is the slide carrier and these are the studs. It doesn't come already pressed in because, you know, what if you want to use this on a different vehicle? So we're, this is the old TJ rim and tire. I just want to make sure it all aligns and it does. And now using my friend over here, Mr. Persuasion, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just hit these in. Once you get these in a good bit, you'll notice that there's still a little ways to go. I tend to like to just tighten those by hand when I have the lug nut on the other end. So you can just tighten those. All right, more surprises. What is this? So this is a wheel adapter. Now, as you know, those Rocktrix rims are designed not for the TJ, <laughs> but for the JK. And so now we must adapt our wheels to them. Just hand threading the spacer on to the slide out carrier. We'll tighten this when it's on the vehicle. Part we've been waiting for, time to install the slide. You're going to use a lock washer, a flat and these grade 8 bolts. Note to self, do not tighten these all the way until the tire is on. Gonna tighten these a little bit more before we put the tire on. So here's our flag mount from Rock Tricks Off Road. Link will be in the description. You just leave that there. Next, this is our, our new third brake light, which we're <laughs> gonna wire in just a second. Also gonna slap this one on, just like so. And that now. Third that third brake light is from Supri. We will put the link as well. Supri, exactly. Now it's time for me to meet my maker. What? To try to lift a hundred pounds of tire onto oh, that. Oh boy. You getting a little nervous, Greg? You're stuttering. Stuttering. Oh boy. Getting my Rock Tricks equipment here ready. This make sure you have some Loctite handy for this flag mount. Start by rolling. Oh God. That was challenging, but it is on you guys. Take a look at that. Let's put our lugs on. Wow, dude, I literally can't. Greg, it looks huge next to you, like huge. Does it? Yeah. We actually have five lug nuts, how funny. See Greg, you guys. Just tightening in the slide carrier now. You want this tire to be flush against the arm to prevent rattling. Looks like we got everything in play. Give it a strong tighten. Get this rubber plug, put it in this area over here. There's Serves as a bump stop. Nice, dude. There's probably an easier way to do this, but... Now, using these thin nuts, you go ahead and slide the nut onto this joint first. Now, keep in mind, one of them is right-hand threaded, the other one is left-hand <laughs> threaded. So they each only go on in one direction. Now, look at how trippy that is. I'm screwing it in going this direction. Next, install this aluminum rod.
tightened just so that that sits perfectly in there. As you can see, I'm not quite there yet. Still not there. Looks like you could use a little more. Just a tad, yeah. Once you've found the ideal length for this aluminum rod, go ahead and tighten these, these nuts. <laughs> these. No. <laughs> so once, so we're done. <laughs> once you tighten that, you're all good to go. Don't forget to use some grease and to grease your pivot pin. We're going to do that in a little while. We actually don't have any right now, but we're not going to use it until we grease it. Now, all we have left to do is to wire our new third brake light as well as add our Rock Tricks flag. So this shouldn't take much longer, but I just want to show you this tailgate. I mean, look at that. It's a, it's a, basically it's a spare tire carrier and you don't have a, a pesky latch here. So you can just, you know, close, the close shop. it and you're done. Wow. That looks awesome. Awesome. You still have access to the keyhole, which is important. I'm glad we saw that. This is going to go ahead and do our wiring. I'm going to just cut it right here. Just want to verify that when I wired this, I did it the right way. Hopefully it's black to black, red to red, red to white. Okay. And it is. So we're just going to cut this here. Go ahead and now connect the red to the red and the black to the black. We're using these outdoor style waterproof butt connectors, making sure all of the copper is exposed. Give it the tug test. Okay, time for the black. See, I just did it myself, you guys. Easy as that. If I could do it, anyone can do it, you guys. DIY all day at home. We're super excited that we can show you guys things to do at home. Why don't we take a look at what it looks like? Let's do it. Yeah. Wow. Let's go. Oh, nice. That is so cool. Last step was to use the electrical tape for those tips. We are wrapping up shop, Greg. Yes, we are. All right, what are you up to? Last but not least, let us wrap up this flag mount. It is very quick and easy. Just make sure on all of these screws you use the appropriate Loctite so that it stays secure for a long period of time. Well, Greg, 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 it's been a minute. All right, while Greg is wrapping that up, let's get this open. Bust it open, right, Greg? Bust it open. Last box of the day. And then we can do our giveaway. <laughs> Maybe there'd be a surprise, I don't know. My friends, we are nearing the end. All that is left is to attach the pole and to announce who won our giveaway. And our final touch, our beautiful, beautiful American flag to show our firefighters some support. That is what the one red stripe stands for. It stands for that last ounce of courage a firefighter exhibits right before going into a burning house to save the people inside. So we're gonna fly this because firefighters have definitely made a positive impact on our lives and we wanna show our support to them. So let's go ahead and hang it. Opens all the way up. That looks gorgeous. Look at all these boxes that we went through. I mean, this was one hefty install that we got done. And just take a look at the end product. 
That is insane. That looks so good. One thing about this is it actually sits a little bit lower than the old tire carrier that we had on our TJ, even Aline's tire carrier over here, which basically lowers the center of gravity of the vehicle as well as gives you a little bit better of a view from the outside. Literally so excited. It looks like it's very rigid and sturdy actually. It doesn't really vibrate. Excited to see how this holds up over time. Check it out, you guys. Look how absolutely insane this looks. We got our amazing flag representing our firefighters. Thank you so much for your service. We have our third great white right over there. From Super Reed. That's right. And we have our tire carrier and bumper. I mean, just look at that. Craig, did we forget about something in this video? I know it's kind of jam-packed. Yes. What do we have to do? I think we have to give away some free Jeep parts. Oh, I think we do. All right, let's go inside and do the giveaway. Let's do it. Let's go. Time for the giveaway. Who's excited? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, put the YouTube link. Click get YouTube comments. Here is the shock we are giving away. This one right over here, brand new, unopened. Let's see what it goes to. Smell how fresh it is. 158 unique commenters. That means you have a 1 in 0.5 or so, 0.75% chance. That's, I mean, 0.75 is pretty good <laughs> for a free item, you know? All right, click that start button. Let's get going. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And the winner is... Tara Tarzan, African man here in Taylor, South Carolina with a plain old TJ needing some bling. All right, Tara Tarzan, just shoot us an email, garagecouple at gmail.com and this Super Re Hood Shot Kit will be on its way to you. For everyone else, don't worry if you missed out. We have a lot of more giveaways planned. Hopefully we can continue to give away tons and tons of items so that you can hopefully win some parts for your Jeep build. Now, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving us a thumbs up and liking the video as well as subscribing to our channel. And be sure to check us out on Instagram at Garage Couple. For now... Oh, 10,000. When we hit 10,000 subscribers, you guys, we are doing an insane giveaway. So make sure to hit that subscribe button for your chance at the win. And for now, I part ways, fair maiden, laden. Goodbye. Congratulations again, Tara Tarzan. <laughs> Tara Tarzan. We'll see you soon, guys. See you soon, guys. <laughs>